All right, so I've got my knife here that I want to make a sheath for and just some plain computer paper. So I'm going to get it laid out here about, I want a little bit sticking out so of the sheath so you've got something to grab a hold of, but I want enough in where it cannot come out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a two-sided sheath and I'm going to go ahead and trace out the back side. And the back side, I'm going to trace... That's probably a little much, about three eighths of an inch on the, pretty much three eighths of an inch past the blade. So that'll give me enough to uh, kind of sew to. And it doesn't have to be exact. I'd rather go a little bit larger and I can trim it off later as opposed to getting it a little bit too narrow because you've got to have enough and that might i'm going to make it just a little bit wider here so three eighths to a half of an inch on each side of your knife is what you want and on the back side you definitely want enough because i'm not going to fold the back side i'm going to leave it or form i guess so that's about right right there and you want enough all the way around where it can fold over and sew. You want about a quarter inch to sew to. So there's that side. And now I'm gonna, I think I got two pieces of paper. Yep. Now I am going to trace out for the front side of the sheath, which I'm gonna mold to the knife. That way it fits nice and tight. And this one, I'm gonna go an inch, inch and an eighth or so. You don't need as much around the tip there, but you will around the handle. So just about like that. That should work out pretty good. I'm gonna, well, my knife moved. That should work out really good, or just like that. So now we're gonna cut these out and trace them onto the leather. All right, so this is the leather I use. I uh, actually ordered this off Amazon, and it's a, uh, I think it was a quarter hide or front hide section that I've made three or four different knife sections or knife knife sheaths out of this and a couple other things my wife used it too and i think it was about 70 bucks 60 70 bucks but i mean i've got a lot of use out of it it goes a long way one thing though some of it is thicker than other parts i think back in here is kind of thin and over here is a little thicker i like the little bit thicker sections so i'm going to cut these out and go ahead and trace them on here and you want to make sure, you know, you've got two sides. So you, whenever you trace them on here, you want to make sure you get it right. This is where I always screw up. I don't cut the sections out right and they don't go together right because you got to have the smooth side on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so I got one section already cut out here and now I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. All right, well, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. I got a little sidetracked and a little crazy, but, uh, I've already got both sections. This is a section that I messed up previously, but I've already got both sections cut out. And what you wanna do is you're gonna take a pan. All right, so what I've done is I took this little Tupperware container and put water in it, heated it up in the microwave until it's pretty much boiling. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna you know, have your one section, and I, I wish I would have videoed this, I kinda of skipped ahead a little, but you're gonna have your back section, which you're not gonna form, and it's just gonna be a base for your knife to sit on. And in the front section, you're going to dip in this hot water for probably 10, 15 seconds. I'm trying to burn myself here. And you'll see all the air bubbles and everything come out. But this hot water is going to make the leather pretty much where you can form it. So now, just shake it off a little bit. Now that your leather will form, you're gonna wrap your knife up really good in the saran wrap, and you're gonna lay your back layer down, and then your front layer. So that's why I messed up on this one. There we go. You're gonna lay your front layer down, and you're gonna fold it down around the knife, nice and tight, and you're gonna clamp it to your back layer and let it dry overnight. Because now you can see I don't even have this clamped or anything. 
but you can see how it forms and fits around the knife. But obviously your front layer is gonna be much wider than this. So it'll fold down and you'll have enough room to clamp and like so. So you're gonna have, have enough room here to clamp and you're just gonna leave your knife in there. That's why you wrap it in saran wrap. Leave it in there overnight, let it dry. And then you can come back and take your clamps off. And now what you do is you're gonna take your two sections and you're gonna take some contact adhesive or what I use is Gorilla Grip glue for leather and rubber and bonding. And you're gonna run a bead of glue around the edge about a quarter inch in and you're gonna glue it all together, clamp it all off again, and then let it cure. And it normally takes 24 hours to cure, which I've already done this, just to kind of speed up the video. So, one problem you do get, you gotta be careful. I tried to use, I used popsicle sticks actually, to uh, put under my clamps, because your clamps will kind of dig into the soft leather. So that's one thing you gotta kind of watch for. I should have probably got some little thin strips of wood and tried to do it a little bit better, but I think it'll work out fine once I finish it off. So, and now if you have any excess, what you're gonna do is wanna trim that off and get it kind of nice and rounded. And I did mess up, I got a pin mark in here, but I'm hoping I, don't, I can get that out somehow. So, now you can see the knife fits down in there really well and nice and tight, so it won't come out. And uh, keep protect the knife and protect you as well. So I'm not gonna do, you could sew in a uh, belt strap on the back of this, but I don't ever use that. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna carry around a big old giant knife on my side. I normally just stick it in my pack whenever I go hunting. So now what we've gotta do is we're gonna finish off some of these edges. So I ordered a leather sewing and making kit off of Amazon. And it's actually pretty handy. It comes with all kinds of stuff. Hey. I've been wondering where that was. So it comes with all kinds of stuff. Half the crap you don't even need. But you can, it comes with punches and there's a couple tools in here that work really well, but this one's pretty basic, but it works really good. What you're gonna do is take this and you're gonna rub really hard and fast on the edges. And I can't do it, I need a tripod. But uh, you're gonna rub fast and hard on the edges and you're gonna take a bevel that kind of fits your leather thickness and it's going to taper your edges and smooth it out real nice. All right, so it needs a little bit more work, but as you can see, it kind of brings the grains of the leather together and rounds it off a little bit. It takes a, it's a little bit of work. You got to rub pretty hard, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it right now. I'm going to go ahead and get it marked off and do the trim and get this thing ready to drill out and sew together. All right, so this is a tool that came with the kit. And what it does is it makes a bead, it cuts a bead into the leather for your uh, your uh, threads to lay into. That's the word I'm trying to look for. It lays a bead for your threads to come to lay down in. And you're gonna go around, <clears throat> you can set this up for different thicknesses. I've already got it set for, oh, well, there we go. I've already got it set for about what I want. I'm gonna make it just, just a touch wider. And now we're gonna go through. And the way this thing works is it just cuts a groove. This thing does it, it gets clogged up. A little head will get clogged up sometimes. And you gotta apply quite a bit of pressure and then get the right angle. But it will eventually. All right, and I finally got the head cleared out. And what it does is cuts a groove out just like that. And I'm gonna go around and I'm already messing up. I gotta keep it nice and even. And it's hard to do with one hand. I really gotta get a good tripod. But uh, I'm just gonna go around the whole thing, front and back, and make your groove. All right, so I've got my grooves made all the way around, front and back, and now, this kit came with, this is pretty neat. It's a little wheel of death. But this marks off, you're gonna run this right down your line here and it'll make indentions 
right where you need to sew pretty much. That way you've got a good idea of where whenever I go to drill it, I'm gonna drill for my stitching. All right, so I ran that around. And as you can see, I've got my holes outlined. And you could use a punch for this, but man, when you do it this way, two pieces of leather, it's just way too hard to get the punch in and out. So I just prefer to put it on a drill press and drill it out. Probably, I don't know, I'll look at the drill. I think it's eighth inch, pretty close, maybe just a touch over. But this seems to make a pretty big hole and it's hard for your threads to lock in. So now, all we gotta do is go drill it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to try to explain this the best I can, is we're going to take one, you're going to get it kind of even on your string. So I'm going to start on one side at my very top hole here and I'm going to even them up. And I'm going to even them up. And it would probably be easier if I could put this in a vise or something, but just for lighting, I'm gonna do it right here under the light. And you're gonna go in through one side, get it kind of snug. You're gonna take the other needle and go back in through that side. And now snug it down. And you're just gonna keep repeating this process and what I like to do is about every two or three stitches, I'm going to cross them and kind of lock them in. So now I get this one stuck through, make sure you can see. So now got the one started through and I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop here. So now I'm gonna go through that loop and that's gonna pretty much knot it up in there. And if I'm gonna finish a, uh, a run of thread, I'm gonna do that probably two or three times. I'm gonna loop it two to three times and I'm gonna do it, leave the last like three stitches and I'll start looping them about three stitches before I end so that way I know that they're good and locked in. All right so there we go and there's our first little bit of stitching. I still got to get that pin mark out but I think I'm going to dye this one a dark nice dark chocolate color so i don't think it's really gonna matter i don't think you'll be able to see it but uh yep that's pretty much it and you're just going to keep it on going all the way around it takes a little bit of time but it's not bad and like here i'm getting ready to run out of string so i'm gonna go ahead and do my knots on it and i may back stitch one and then keep coming back just to make sure it's locked in real good so there we go all right so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna wait and finish this one up for a later time but I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of what I do to finish them out. So these have been dyed, it's a chocolate, just leather dye. And then I gave them a good coat, a couple coats of mink oil that just seals the leather from any moisture getting in there and pretty much deteriorating the leather. And I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I'm gonna do it again. Make sure you use a wax thread because if you don't use a wax thread, moisture can pretty much rot it as well. And you can put in, this is one I made years and years ago, but it's got a piece in the middle in between the stitching, the two pieces of leather to kind of just keep the blade from hitting the stitching. You can do that if you want. I run a real nice thick bead of glue and keep it inside my threads. So the glue pretty much bonds it and keeps the 
blade from hitting the leather. So if it's something you're gonna use a ton, that's probably a really good idea. If it's gonna be like a daily, daily carry knife for you, I would definitely probably recommend doing that. But for just something that I use mostly for hunting knives, and you know, I take them out whenever I need to clean a deer, you know, a couple times a year in the fall, and then they go up for the rest of the year. I don't really do it. The glue is will do good enough for me. So definitely want to make sure you get the mink oil on there. And this is if you just do one coat, that's one coat of mink oil. You'll do another, but probably uh, two coats, two or three coats to get it good and sealed. But just one coat, that's the color you get. That's just natural, and then that's the, I hope you can see that. But that's just natural, and that's one coat of mink oil. So you can go either way, it's just personal preference. But these things, it's a fun little hobby to do in the wintertime. You can't get outside and work on stuff, it's freezing cold. And just, you know, something that kind of aids your hunting and fishing. You can make fillet knives or whatever you want. But uh, fun little projects to do in the winter when you're kind of stuck inside. So appreciate everybody watching. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't seen my skin and knife videos, how I make my skin and knives, I'll link those in the description below. We'll see you next time.